Hey everyone, welcome back. This video, we're gonna talk about return values. So right now, as is, this function prints to the console. And although that's fine in certain situations, we don't always want to just print junk to the console. We want to give that data back to the caller, which the caller, by the way, is when you call or invoke the function. We wanna give that data back to the caller to decide what to do with it because maybe they don't wanna actually put it in the terminal, they want to give it to some other function or assign it to a variable. And we currently cannot do that if we're just printing data to the console. So what I wanna do is I want to change this up a little bit to return data instead. And I'm gonna be a little bit nicer to Claire. I'm not gonna tell her that she smells like pickles, even if it's true. I'm just going to say return and we can actually add a value after the return and just give her some questioning. Who do you think you are? And then what I wanna do is if we're not Claire, I want to return down here. So let's move these prints down for a second and say return. And then we're gonna say, hey there, welcome, comma. And then what we could do is say plus name. So now we can get rid of these print statements and now our function is going to return data instead of printing it to the console. But this is going to change the way we have to invoke the function. Because run this right now and we get absolutely nothing in the terminal. That's because there's no print statements in any of our code. So let's go through just one example here. We're going to say greet. We're going to pass in Sabrina. And how do we actually get that return data? Well, we can assign it to a variable by saying something like returned greet Sabrina. I don't wanna run it quite yet because we're still not printing anything. If you wanted to print the data, you would say print and pass in returned, like so. And running it now, it says, hey there, welcome Sabrina. And we can still use this just like any other function call. So we could pass in Claire as an example. And now the output is, who do you think you are? Because we're assigning to this return and then immediately using returned in this print, we can actually just bypass that step. So we could take this and put it inside of the print, like so. So with this nested function call, the greet gets invoked and whatever that returns gets passed to print. So running this, we get the same exact thing. That's all I got for returns for right now, but it makes our function a lot more useful. That black box illustration makes more sense. We give it an input, it processes some data, and then it gives us an output. It's kind of like the basis of algorithms even. If you think of, we haven't really talked a ton about algorithms, but when you get into some more complex algorithms, you can think of them as this black box where we don't have to know the inner details. We just pass in some data and it gives us some results using that algorithm that we don't have to know the inner details of. We're doing the same thing here at a micro scale. We're greeting people and we don't have to necessarily worry about how it decides if Claire is welcome or what the message is. We just have to know that we can pass it some data and get some data in return. So what that means is we could move that function declaration completely out of sight and you should still confidently understand how this code works. The way we push that data away is known as an abstraction. We've abstracted away the inner details by creating a function. All right, so I'm gonna put this back. We don't need a million spaces in our code. So we'll bring this back up to the top and move on to the next video where we are gonna be talking about default values, which are super important when it deals with parameters and passing data. So stay tuned. <laughs>